In this overview video, I'd like to show you in SQL some of the databases that get created for BizTalk. And so here I've gone to my computer and I'm expand databases and you can see the ones called BizTalk here. So there's five of them, five of them by default that start with BizTalk. And then you'll have probably BAM archive and BAM primary import and you may have other BAM databases, but uh, you also see here SSODB, that stands for Single Sign-On Database. That's sort of a separate, I mean, it's included with BizTalk, but it's sort of a separate product. And so there are other utilities that are part of the Microsoft family that use Single Sign-On. So like, for instance, in a production world, once you've installed SSO the first time, and then you install BizTalk, you would just connect to an existing SSO database. And so some of the databases, real quick, we have the message box database, which we talked about in the architecture uh, very first video, and we talked about messages being published here. There's not a lot in this database you can really kind of poke around at. Most everything's pretty hard to find. You see, you, there's things like the parts table, there's a fragments table, and even finding your messages in here is, is really difficult. Uh, your applications would be easy to see. And then here you can actually see uh, some of my, I can't remember if this is orchestrations or hosts that I created. And all this different tracking data and spools, parts, and so on. So that's a database you won't get a lot out of on your own without a lot of difficulty. The BizTalk management database is much easier, and it basically is just a series of entities. So like here, if I want to find all my SIN ports, for instance, um, Okay, the trick is they use a three character prefix. So is it ADM send port? No. Is it BAM send port? No. Is it BT send port? No. But it's BTS, BizTalk Services underscore send port. And so for instance, there it is. So if I do right click and say open table, you'll see that this data is very easy to read. I don't necessarily suggest you start writing queries against these databases, but just to let you know that every time you add a send port, obviously it's being stored here in the database. And the name of this database, by the way, is the management, BizTalk MGMT, Management Database. Now you can name these databases anything you want when you install it, but if you're talking to other people, they're going to talk about the BizTalk Management Database, and you need to know on your machine where that, that is located. You'll see just other things. So under BTS here, you see parties, orchestrations, message types. And there's one case I'll actually give you a nice SQL query to query uh, the schemas that are out here. Map specifications. What BizTalk version are you running? Here's a table that gives you your version number. And so see the management database is major version 3, minor version 6, and so on. And the RTM and a date. In case that way you know you're not running a beta version, for instance. There is a rule engine database, so if we look here at tables, we should see something probably called policies or rules. Okay, I did a query here. I did an open table on rule set, and here you see my policy and my versions. So instead of calling it a policy, they're calling it a rule set, a set of rules. But again, this is not a database you're normally going to query. And then you have your DTADB, that's your tracking database. And it's more of a historical archive database. When things are done in the message box, they often get copied or moved over here. And so here, for instance, the orchestration debugger uses this table. And you can see here basically when, when things ran, what shapes ran in your orchestrations. So this table can get very full and there are certain SQL jobs you need to set up to basically either clean or archive some of your databases. And let's talk about those real quick. Those are down here under your SQL notification service, I mean SQL agent, excuse me, SQL server agent. And you notice I actually have it disabled right now. Sometimes what I do is I stop SQL server on my computer because it takes up a lot of memory and when I'm not running SQL or BizTalk I like to keep my memory available for other things. So here you'll see jobs and then you can uh, let's close some of these screens here. So on the jobs I believe you can right click and say show or view history and on the right or another, another screen pops up 
and you can see every job w when it ran. And you can see these little jobs, a lot of them are set up to actually run every single one minute. So all day long, every one minute, they're running. So that's another thing, again, if you're running BizTalk on a laptop, they don't take a lot of CPU, but you've got you know, 10, 10 SQL agent jobs here, and, and I think seven or eight of them run every single minute all day long. And so what they're doing is they're, they're, they're the kind of the jobs that copy the data from one database to another and keep everything in sync. Uh, BizTalk will actually continue to run if you've turned these off, but then you can start to slow down or you might see some performance issues in your message box database. So it is actually important to keep these running every so often anyway. And most of them are scheduled by default. There's a couple of them up here. You'll see that by default are not, oops, I didn't mean to click them there. These are not turned on. And so you actually have to set up your own backups and your own cleanups. So the cleanup would be based upon how often you want to clean your data up on the DTA database. And of course the backup is where you want to back up your database. So you need to set those jobs up yourself. We may talk about that in the future if we do an administrator CD. And one last note, BizTalk 2006 definitely runs with SQL 2005. I think it might be able to still support 2000 as well. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, that was one of the things that BizTalk 2004 did not run on SQL 2005. So if you do want to use SQL 2005, you have to be on BizTalk 2006. However, one thing they did not do is the SQL analysis services. If you want to do BAM and do the three-dimensional cubes and the data warehouse, those types of functions, you still need to use SQL 2000. So in my BAM videos, I will show you how I had to install both 2005 and 2000 on the same computer in order to show the cubes and OLAP and how that all works together. So, um, and if you're going to use analysis services then, your BAM primary import database, instead of being here, it needs to be in SQL 2000 as well. That's only if you're using the what's called aggregation though, which is the OLAP cubes. You can actually do BAM without aggregation if you want to. So that this video overall was just kind of giving you a high level view of some of the databases, SQL 2005 databases that are created when you install BizTalk and what their purposes are.